Welcome back to Helsinki, Finland for the assembly party. The Asus ROG Masters Tournament has come to a spot where there's three teams left and we have to knock one out before we can get to our grand finals. But that is further down in the line. Before that, we need to find out who from these two teams will go and challenge Havu in the final. And they met earlier today. It was quite one-sided, but we'll see how it goes. Please give it up for Vitalis and Alpha Gaming. All right, don't go too far away. How are you feeling? Feels good, man. You faced them earlier today. Have you changed anything since then? No. Alpha Gaming, you faced them earlier today. How are you feeling? We're feeling good about this one. We think we're going to win this one, definitely. Did you say change a lot of things, or what did you do? Yeah, we, play, we changed a bit of a few things around there and there. And uh, yeah, uh, we're very confident in this one. Right, Ari, do you have anything to tell them before we head to the server? Good luck. Any comebacks? Be careful. Uh, there we go. And while they shake their hands, we are going to our casters. In English, it is Lurpisianato. Please take it away, boys. As well, Maxi, get the with Concourse three minutes. That banter was straight fire. Yeah. I mean, I'm these, sweating out here. These interviews are really delivering. They definitely are. A gift that keeps on giving. Yeah. Um, what do we think about this game, though? I mean, these teams faced each other earlier in the tournament. Vitalis had a strong start. It kind of stumbled a little bit, but then on the city side of overpass, they took control of the game and, and finalized it, you know, relatively easily. Well, I actually thought that Alpha Gaming didn't look too bad in that game, and they, they had a slow start to both of the halves. Vitalis didn't really have a whole lot to fall back on on either side of the map after the initial strong start that gave them most of the rounds that they actually needed for the win. So yep. curious to see how it goes here. Obviously, sort of the same thing for, for Vitalis in their other game against Havu, where they had a really strong strong first half, and they really didn't have anything to fall back on in the second half. So Alpha now are the warmed up team from beating Super Team, if, uh, if you can call that warm up. Yeah. So, so we'll see. I, I mean, I, I, I don't think Vitalis are huge favorite in this one based on the games we've seen so far today, by any means. Yeah, I mean, what feels like could be a strong point on a map like Cash, which is going to be a map that they're, they're playing, um, is that the, the ability that Vitalis was able to show on overpass on CT side is something you definitely need on a map like Cash. Um, either you're holding middle, you're forcing that up, or if you don't have middle, then you're going to be making plays in the A garage or B garage, and depending on the situation, you need to kind of be able to do a lot of things. Now, the one thing that is not so comforting for them is that their T side and the buildups of their rounds were not exactly on point, were they? And that's something you need to have on a map like Ash as well. I think for Vitalis, 
boost map probably fits them a little better in the sense that they had the they had the aggressive CT side, like you said, which you need on cash. I mean, you can't just play passive static on CT side of cash. You're not going to win a lot of rounds that way. And for T side, they didn't have a whole lot of things planned on overpass. And this is a map where you don't really need a whole lot. You just need a couple smokes for middle, a couple smokes for A, and you're in business. That's that's all you really need to be able to execute in the sites and at least have a chance of winning rounds. So theoretically, you would think that this would maybe fit middle is a little better. Yeah. Um, Curious actually how the veto went down. I don't think I don't think we saw that for the earlier game, but how we'd actually which one of the teams steered clear of the choices that they made earlier today. Um, as it seems like Alpha Vito, Crane, Inferno, and Mirage, and Biddle is took out Nuke, Cobblestone, and Overpass. So actually, pull up the uh, previous game's Vito as well. So actually, in that sense, Vito has had the choice of uh, Vito has had the choice of playing overpass again, but just decided against it. Okay, so not too, not too different. Looks like we are, yeah. are going live with the game, so this is for a spot in the grand final. It's going to be probably that's going to be a best of three. And yep, there we go. We're going to be live in a uh, In second just here. a second. Yeah, we are. Got a couple couple kills traded early on. Four on three currently in favor of Alpha. Hey, hello, sound. There we go. Two on two situation now. Bomb is still with Arvid here. He's got a USB 55 HP. Things do slow down after that initial brawl. And they still got a minute, minute and 20 seconds on the clock. So they can do a lot of things here. So no nades to their name now. So it's going to be all up to them winning those battles. Slowing down a little bit mid-round here. Terrorist is waiting for a push. Both Alpha players actually sticking together here towards the B site. It looks like Middle East are slowly going to make their way towards A now. Yeah. They are just going to be going slow up round. Highway. Yeah. It makes sense for for the alpha guys to be just you know. Oh, they're gonna they're gonna together. walk right into Wusung here. This is gonna be tricky. I think he heard him. Look like. But no, but they actually might think the beast clear now. Yeah. But not another Deagle doesn't realize it. Keeps fighting, but Arvid is so low that he's still gonna be favored to win this one. This is gonna be tough. Twenty seconds left. I don't think he's gonna be able to make it to A. It's gonna be Pete. Oh. How is he missing all these shots? That was awkward. Awkward is a good word. Um, pretty, uh, pretty tough way for Vitalis to lose it because they probably thought that it would be a player by car or so, maybe another one in B. And instead, they just walked right into Wuzung. And then when they thought that B might have been clear, just rushed right into not another one dig. It was, it was tough. And apparently, there's a technical pause taking place. Yeah. Not another one dig, having low FPS, apparently. Yeah, well, and these little reboot should probably fix that, you'd expect. But yeah, not the kind of start you want to have when you're Vitalis, for sure. I mean, you do, in a 2 and 2 situation, and you make it into a 2 and one you think that bombs out is empty, and the one's still there, he gets an instant headshot straight away, and then he had RB with very low HP, so he really had to nail like get that one shot and really to be able to win it, but it becomes very awkward towards the end. No, that was the that was the actual problem is that Ariel went first and he got one bullet in. Yeah. But at that point, it's Arvid left down to low health. Not another one dig actually gave him a chance to win that round because he started running into the site. He must have thought that Arvid might be making a run for the A site. Gave it gave him a chance, but both of them just missed so many shots. Maybe. We'll see if the F I mean, this is one of those rounds where you see someone miss a lot of shots, uh, low FPS. We'll see. We'll, we'll see. Yeah, I mean, I've seen people claim uh, claim low FPS after this is before. <laughs> well, I mean, also, I mean, but it would also explain why the why that looked awkward, right. as you put it. Yeah, yeah, true. All right, we might be here for a little bit, just waiting for things to be happening. Um, we're trying to solve the technical issue, whatever it may be. But always unfortunate when this happens. Uh, we're so early into the game as well, so you can't really, you know, there's not much to go by at this point in time. Obviously, for Vitalis, I guess the, um, 
the bad thing is if 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 their T side is anything we can kind of make assumptions through what they had an overpass earlier, uh, they could be in a bit of trouble here, having lost the pistol, not having that comfort of having the the possibility of a 3 0 lead to start things off with. But again, it's a very different map. And like you said, you only need certain basic things uh, under control to be able to to have a, uh, a pretty good T side. So in that sense, let's hope it's not an issue here for them. Yep. It's a good comeback in the in the pistol round for Vitalis because they went down in a two versus four situation pretty quickly, and they were when they were pushing B, then just a pair of quick kills slowed it down for such a long time. And it's just unfortunate, because for them, it looked like they were actually already headed, headed up highway, and they changed their mind as they were going, going up towards the A side. The A side would have been a free bomb plan after plan situation. I think the CTs had a kit, but it would have, would have still been tough to make it there on time. What's your, what's your like, favorite map right now in CS when it comes to like, watching competitive CS? I think Train's fun. Yeah? I think train's pretty fun. I think if you have if you have tactical teams overpass, it's always great because he has so many yeah. so many possibilities for both teams. Both as as CTs, you can play very dynamic, and as terrorists, there's so many different things you can do. I think train is just just fun map in general. It's it's, it's one of our fun. classics, you know, back yeah. in the day, right? So it's, it's it's always always been a always been a favorite. Aside from that, I mean, I think Kabul is easily the worst map. Yeah. Cool. I don't think there's any question about it. It's just a bad map. Yeah, we had a discussion with Valve about it. Like, I was, you know, we're trying to make the point where, towards the bomb site, how hard it is for the CTs to really make anything, right? Mm -hmm. It's a limited options you can do on the CT side of the map. So, I think it really makes for a more boring kind of games a lot of the time. Cash, however, I think is also a pretty good map because it's it's it just there's so many different dynamics. Uh, for both parts, you can you can hit a bomb so straight away. You can build rounds through middle, um, and on the city side, you, you will see teams take different approach to it, like leaving open middle open. And once they lose it, they'll have a setup of how to take over that A main or push it into B. And there's so many things you can do. So it feels like it, it kind of takes out a lot from a team to be able to be very efficient on both sides. Problem with cash is it's very skill heavy. It's a bit like dust too in the sense that you don't need a lot of yeah, a lot, lot, of, lot of open, tactics. Yeah. It's a lot. It's a lot of aim duels, which makes the results a bit more random. And as such, people don't like to play that in best of ones generally. They would rather play something like Inferno, where they have something they can that's a little more reliable that they can do than just going for aim duels, boosting up middle, getting themselves out into A, and then hoping they win the after plans. So as such, we don't we don't really see cash being played that much. The one team that's really kind of made it their map. And I well, yeah, but I mean they're <laughs> sort of a notch below sure. the elite tier. Sure. Still, until they prove prove us wrong. But SK is the one that's really brought it back. Previously, it was always always Fnatic and Virtus Pro who love playing cash, and then others would step up to the plate every now and then. Yeah, before Virtus Pro decided to lose against King with six and zero. Well, I mean they they did somehow make the make the top four. Now they did, yeah, that's for sure. I'm playing cash in the group stage too. In a in a major where Immortals and Gambit made the grand final. It's the world we live in. And the game is about to go live, so let's get get straight back into it. Not our faces, the game. No? Oh, yes. there we go. There we go. Alright, 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 fair enough. As we can see now, Vitalis has decided to force. They have a couple of smokes that makes you think it's going to be some kind of a pretty straight up A push coming in. Actually, it's just going to be a straight up brawl towards that A bomb site. They're already up there. Orbit the first guy in with that tech nine gets the first kill on the Christo. And Bona as well is going to deliver. And that's the two early kills going away of Vitalis. And the bomb site already lost in a five on three advantage. They were just run over. Alpha didn't even really get a shot in. They were just completely How did run they get over. open? How did they get through A main that openly? It's, it's just... No one was really holding it. They just they just pop flashed it and ran through. Three v five. It's gonna be a tough retake. Ariel gets one. That's just a flawless round. Easily won by Vitalis. Here the Finnish fans clapping, clapping a little bit. Golf flaps, golf flaps across the board. See what Alpha does here though for this one. They're if they decide to go for a force. Yeah, they are absolutely. Nullified in terms of economy, but they do buy deagles. Every one of them has a deagle, but no armors. So, yeah, I mean, you know, it's one of those kind of buys. Like, does it make sense? Well, I guess it does if you get five one deagles, but in the big picture, not entirely sure about it. 
Again, you see Fiddle is just taking it or approach towards the A-bombs. As we can see, there's so much grenades for them to use. You, you can use those mollies so well to flash out our opposition, and that's exactly what they're doing right now. They're just planning that bomb side together. It's going to be Wusung, though, getting the first one, but a nice trade coming in from Vitalis. One kill coming in on the Arvid. Three versus one situation for Baser. It's just looking for, looking for people to peek his Deagle, but good pop flash there. Some damage dealt. Just a matter of time at this point. He's getting peeked with a flash. Easy kill for Ariel. Two to one Vitalis, and it's going to be a save round for Alpha. Yep, straight up round there. Surviving with three, and that one was Vitalis, so. And surprisingly, Chris do bought a Deagle previous round, so he's not going to have money for an up yeah, in right. the next round without getting kills. Questionable, questionable choices. Questionable choices. Bit of a surprising decision. Ariel taking a lot of damage from Tam like by Sugar, switches guns with one of his teammates. That's also, yeah, he gets the AK-47. He's a very, very low HP uh, fam like towards uh, that white box, but it's going to RB to actually open things up with a kill on with a grenade. Middle is wide open. And, and Vittle is now making their way up through the middle. They're going to get spotted by Vazer pretty soon as they go, to, go up towards highway. Tam like now very low health in the site. And it's just a matter of time before Vittle is going to the A side, it looks like. Some more damage being dealt. Bana gets a kill through the door. Vazer is now down to low health as well. Yeah, well, pick, bomb has been picked up now. And just one by one, Alpha game is going down. It's Wusang though. He thinks otherwise. It's going to get a kill. Gets taken out by Otto, now down to Vazor. Vazor. Here in Z connector. Let's we'll see that. All you can really hope for is to try to get a cheeky exit kill, maybe. But even then, our beat is here in the middle and he's ready for it. Ready for a potential push. Bomb has been planted. One on four. Again, money spent by spent by Alpha on further pistols. Not really the uh, conservative use of money buying CZ-75s in the second second save round in a row. Chris 2 goes for the uh, glass cannon up. I, I I would think that the, uh, the body armor would have been more useful than the, than the Deagle on the second round, but... Uh, yeah, definitely would have been. But maybe not. 3 to 1 for Vittle is the first weapon round for Alpha, but it's not a... It's not really the ideal buy. No, only two diffuse kids, for example. Very little needs to work with. Again, it's just a slow start here, Vitalis. Trying to clear out the map a little bit before committing to anything. Obama's making its way towards the door, so it does make you think that it's going to be an A push coming in. Slow round, one minute left on the clock. Not much yet done by either team. Looks like Vitalis are getting set up to hit the A side and Otto gets boosted up middle. Otto's gonna be on the flank in the middle. That's gonna be very problematic. It looks like Vazer is gonna go through the smoke and he's probably going to be shot in the side right here. And there he goes down. Christie is the last man left. And misses the first shot. Otto's faster. 4 to 1 now for the Finns. It's going to be another save round for the Danish side. And just not a good start. Not exactly, no. Not ideal, for sure. No. Again, a very short forward run for the Finns. Just waiting out a bit. Trying to make it seem like they're taking over middle, but instead they have people just plowing through the door. They make work of that A defense very, very quickly. And that's pretty much a round over. Again, it's going to be a save here for Alpha. 
And Vidal is playing very, very far back. Aside from taking middle, you see Arvid all the way back in T spawn, holding for a B push. Bonus outside of outside of the door area. It's taking it slow. Otto's the one leading the push in the middle. Sort of overextending by himself. Gets the first kill. But Vidal is just taking control of the map slowly, one spot at a time. Basic CTs here on the bomb side, though. So Bono's going to have to be a little careful, though. He does get a kill. That's one of the nullified. The bomb is now taking its way towards the bomb side, where Ariel has already been able to pick up not another Deagle. As Bono gets destroyed by the P250 just pre fired in the door. Overstate is welcome, definitely peeking, peeking that tiny area. Yeah. Vazer has an AK now that he's probably going to try to save for the, uh, for the following round as Vitalis are going to make it 5-1 to one in their favor after the last pistol round. It's a pretty solid start, isn't it? Arvid, once again, having a, having a flying start. He's, he's got nine kills after, after six rounds. Assuming nothing changes here. Vazer takes, takes out on it. And for some reason, Vazer keeps peeking with the AK, and his teammate is not with him. So there goes that AK. It's not going to be safe for the next round. Questionable? Yes. I would say questionable is still a nice way to put it. See, we're trying to be diplomatic here. Sorry? We're trying to be diplomatic here. I, I, I think it's just uh, maybe it's not working. Probably not. I think you might need to be rougher to get the message across. That was a dumb play. Learn how to save weapons if you're going to save. So an, now a full buy for Alpha. Christie's got, got an op. And Vitalis are just doing the same old thing. They're just taking over the map. Otto's holding for a B push. There's no one really there in the shower area. Bone has already taken over, over the door area. Christie's holding for a boost in the middle. But so far, not a lot of not a lot of action transpiring across the map. Well, also get, does get boosted up. He's got that up. He's trying to get a little bit of information in the smoke off Z connector. Afterwards, to create a bit of distraction. Meanwhile, Vitalis hasn't really committed to anything as as of this point yet. And we need to be able to get that opening kill once again and then decide on what to do. But they're not getting much because Alpha, as we can see from the minimap, is playing very passively. They still look unclear as to what they want to do. Ariel's going to smoke himself out of middle. Looks like they might be splitting towards the vent. Yeah. So into B through vent and the B area, three people coming through middle. Auto flashing for them. They get out of the vent. And the Molly gets blocked apart, blocked off. Arvid gets the entry kill. Christy with two kills now with his AWP in the beam. The bomb is gonna get planted unless Alpha has something in, something to say about it. They don't. Three on four after plant now for Vitalis. So it was a rough retake when you're in a big bomb site. Christo. This is that opportunity I think you get might have gotten surprised how Free a kill he had on his screen. It's Army to Ariel coming in big, just splitting up those four kills between themselves. And again, Vidal is coming out on top, and another same round here potentially coming coming out from Alpha. That was a great crossfire by Arvid and Ariel. It was such a hard place to come out. There's only two two tiny holes if you're not not flanking B, not coming from vent, not coming from T spawn. Two tiny areas where you can try to come out of. They didn't have a lot of flashes or smokes to use to block off areas. And they just had to run into Vitalis' crossfire. Arvid and Ariel clean up, clean out. Arvid up to 13 kills now after seven rounds. Well, Ona is going to be starting things off here. A bomb site is already opened up with that one kill. Well, there's another one trying to contest. A couple of but kills coming in from the A site. It's a five on two right now. Not another one dig is just uh, 
setting up in the CT spawn for potential pushes. Might be, looks like it will be a tactical pause after this round. It probably is right about the uh, right about time to take it. You're going to be down one to seven. Not much has been working out for you since the pistol round win. Might as well see if there's there's any other ideas to change anything you've been doing. Because frankly, it just hasn't been working this far. No, it definitely hasn't. I mean, it, it's they they haven't been able to kind of disrupt Vitalis at all in the earlier parts of the round. If anything, it's going to it has been Vitalis that has had the man advantage. In a lot, in most of the situations, so maybe you want to throw in a bit of aggression there if you're Alpha. I mean, so far Alpha's been doing exactly what we said you cannot do in Cash, which is play static player spots. It's it's a map that heavily favors terrorists to just execute into the site and go for aim duels. It's it's you just have to be so much more skilled than your opponents if you're going to play that way. And frankly, I'm not even sure if they are more skilled than Vitalis. They might not be. So I mean, that's just the problem. They're going to have to do something. Play more dynamic on the CT side, maybe go for some pushes, go for some early aggression, try to gain some ground. So far, it hasn't been working, so they're definitely going to have to change what they've been doing. And they do have a lot of money this round, so this would be the time where if you want to play aggressive middle, you can go for it. If you, want to, if you want to double up, you can go for it. Let's see, they don't have very good spawns, so that kind of, that kind of kills the potential, say, aggression towards A main. That's not going to be much of an option. You're not going to beat the best best spawn terrorist there. But at the same time, Vitalis haven't really played very aggressive there, so maybe you can go for it. Yeah, you can pop flush your way in there. If you understand that they haven't been playing there early on, maybe you just delay push door. Maybe you try to take out Bona, who's always there, just making noise. But you have to do something. You can't keep playing the same exact way. Something's got to change here. Definitely, yeah. No, I mean, they've, they've been getting manhandled so far. And even in the situations they had the advantage on, they still lost. So it's, it's rough. It's rough out there. That's the unpause coming in. So let's, say, let's see what kind of buy Alpha go for if they mix everything up. So you got the one, one up. up coming in for Christu. Nothing else. Otherwise, you're, you're just standard buy. The four rifles. Now they have every, every possible mate. They have all the money in the world. What do they do with it? Seems as though Christo might have a bit of a uh, party coming over to his wave. That smoke, though, is going to force him to fall back a little bit. Instead, he goes for checkers, which is molly. And you have four of the five of Phyllis guys. Actually, he, uh, Chris, Christo just saw, saw the head. He got someone, gets one kill. The pop flag comes in, and here comes the push from the fins. And that's a trade on, on not another 1D. Christo is stuck in the smoke. It was a little cracked, but couldn't couldn't make it work. And it's another 3v4. We saw what happened last time. It's just so hard to hold on. To, uh, sorry, retake to this retake this bomb side. It's just easier to hold on as terrorists. There is a player on the flank, but it looks like he might be. Vazer is going for the vent, and the vent is not broken. He's gonna have to make noise. He gets spotted now. One of his teammates gets killed. Ane gets blinded and gets taken out. Now Otto's the last man standing, and he's far outside of the site. Gets the first two kills, though, and now he's got a chance. Gets taken out by Tam. Tam, like, got into a nice spot, way far above. No way for the opera to adjust that quick, and there was just, frankly, no time with the bomb already being diffused within the smoke. So the first round since the pistol round on board for Alpha, and it's 72 right now in favor of the Finns. And now this is the round where you run the risk of just full money control for Vitalis if you, if you can convert this one as the Dane. The big kill there was uh, Vazor coming through the vent. If he, if he would have died, two and two situation, could have easily gone in the way of Vitalis. He had the, he had the flash. That was, that was what turned it around. Yeah. You saw Christy going for the aggressive push, takes out Bana. This is the kind of stuff we needed to see from them. This is exactly what we needed to see. But now I'm not sure. I agree with this. Yeah, this you're, is you're already up. Stretch you can, yeah. You're already up in a five on four. I mean, he, he didn't get penalized for it because there was no one in A main. But that was just a risk they didn't really need to take. One of his teammates goes down in the smoke in the middle. We see Ariel just claiming ground, walking towards the white box. And Christu stays in A main. He gets a kill from behind the smoke. It's a four on three once again in favor of the CTs. But he's going to be caught off guard here if he's, if he's not careful. Ariel's right behind the white box. It's going to be B-Bush coming in here shortly. Arvid is leading the way. 
is already in the shower. I don't think CT's realized the only player playing there is not another one dig, and he's opping by CT. So if a smoke comes in here, which they don't actually have, they don't have a smoke, so they're gonna. Never mind. They did. They had one. They found one. Never mind. That's just a matter of time before the bomb gets planted, and it's another 3v4. Still another opportunity. After for the terrorists. Exactly. It's still very, very doable for them, too. Good plan for checkers. You have two players there. Look at this. The CTs have two ops at this point. Yeah, that's that's going to make, make it incredibly hard to retake the site. And they don't have anybody coming through, through vents this time around. They're all going to be coming through CT. So this, this round definitely favors the terrorists at this point. Chris 2 goes down with his op. Can't really match on his position. Another kill coming in for Arvid. Tamlike's down to 50 health. Ariel yeah. gets a kill. It's down to a 1v2 for, for Tamlike. Time is running out. And he's just running out of time. He has a kit. He's got a flash. But that's not going to be enough. And that's just... I mean, you just can't retake the site. Even if you're up one, one player. If you have two ops and you don't have anybody coming through vents. The one mistake Alpha did was they didn't have their last player who stayed by car for quite a while rotate to come in through vents. That would have been the one move that could have turned around for them. Right now, they are completely broke. They're actually even going for some of their players in a sort of an odd scenario. Three of their players went for a full buy and two of them for a full save. Uh, some... Very sensible. Questionable decision making by their team overall. Uh, maybe someone not following the leader's, leader's words. In any case, it's 8-2. to two. The Danes are already down a man. They're going to have zero money for next round. This is looking an awful a lot like a 12-13 to 13 round half for the Finns to start off the map. Definitely is. Look at this patience from Phyllis right now. Yeah, Bona just waiting. Rightfully so. His vessel or is there actually with the Deagle. The rest of the team is uh, boosted up here. Probing information, aerial, and also here in mid. And Bonnet got picked, up, picked off last round in door, so it makes sense that you play it a little slower. You stay careful in case someone's pushing there again. Of course, last round it was against an, against an AWP, so it's a little, little different story. Slightly. No sniper rifles this round for Alpha. Ariel gets a kill in the middle. And now this is going to be the push into the A site. Vazer is all alone, gets taken out. He's swarmed from every single direction into the A site. The last two players for the CTs are in the B site. Tamlike actually has a deagle and armor, a bunch of nades, and a kit. Uh, kind of a weird buy when some of your teammates are, are fully saving, excuse me. Not really sure what happened there. But he's probably going to try to save this equipment and this pistol for the coming round. Well, it's going to be a 9-2 scoreline. A very, very good first half. If you're a fan of Vitalis right now, who are also surviving this round with five alive. So that's just going to vote even better for them. Their economy is just awesome at this point. RV just hit 16K. You have Ariel at 14, almost 15. Three over 10K. I mean, this is this is a disaster for Alpha. Yeah. How this game has turned out ever since the one pistol round. Exactly. Nine to two, and they've got no money for this round. It's gonna be another save. Uh, and once again, they're wasting quite a bit of money. Not another one day gets a dig and a and an armor. And by the way, he hasn't had a single one dig so far this tournament. Push into A main. At least the Danes are doing something as a team this round. The bad thing is, no Finns waiting there. Ana is falling back all the way back to T-spawn. He's ho holding for a push all the way by the truck. Arvid's close to B already. And the Finns still have pretty good map control. Ariel's already out in the middle by the vent area. It's 5v5, and they're just waiting to group up somewhere. See if the CTs will give them any kind of pick anywhere on the map. Yeah, slowly progressing here as Vitalis. We're already here in the vent, but it's going to be... And there's the one Nothan, dig. actually, with that one dig coming in. Not so another one. No, there's no another. He's dead. Dead now, of course. Four on four situation. Vitalis getting entry into the B side. One is actually hitting, uh, hitting the spam a little bit through shower. Christy is going to be coming right into his screen any second now. There he comes. Actually, takes gets the kill. Bit of a misplay. 
I see Vazer getting taken out in vent. The last man standing is Tam Like with his safe Desert Eagle, frantically spamming through. Not even sure if the bullets leave the uh, leave the barrel when spamming at that speed. Two to ten now, and this is the time where Alpha just need to get into it if they don't want to be eliminated right here. Two to ten, facing elimination, playing for a spot in the grand final. Winner's gonna play against Habu Gaming. And right now, Vittle is looking great for that spot for their rematch from the earlier game today. And from the finals of the Nordic Bootcamp thing. Just a month ago. Christy once again gets Bonat. Christy's really been the one difference maker, the one player who's been able to make something happen for his team throughout these games. Aside from him, not a lot of bright things, bright spots in their game, not a lot of things to write home about. Gets his second kill, Vazer gets one as well. It's a five on two currently for the Danes. And it's still not too late at this point for the Danes to mount a comeback, but they're gonna need these final rounds of this half, a good start to the terrorist half, and just slowly work from there. Yeah. Still doable. Definitely still doable. Now the Q, the jig is up. They know both of those are towards the B bomb site. They should probably, well, considering the time still left, I guess over rotation is still not in the order, but the push is coming in. The one Eagle making a lot of damage. She's this Wusung. He gets, they both gets a kill. It's gonna that's be the third round, round on the board. That, that's what they needed for the rest of this half. That is what they needed. The problem is they didn't have a lot of equipment there. So even, even now, as they full buy, they're gonna be down to not a lot of money to a point where they're not going to be able to afford a full buy if they lose. It's just so costly for them. And meanwhile, Vitalis is just flush with money. They're going to be able to easily buy for the final round as well, regardless of what happens here. So some pressure for Alpha to win this round, get a chance at getting five. They really just need more to work with at this point before we switch sides. And Vittle is going for the boost in middle. Looking for a pick. Couple picks coming in. Just getting flushed out of middle, aren't they? Just by Molly, smoke, flash, come in, get two kills. Five on three. Done deal. Now, this is the point where the CTs would have to actually make something happening. As we can see right now, they're just holding passively on the site. CT spawn basically and one in B. This is where you kind of need to make a play if you want to be a part of this round. Because you're just going to get overwhelmed. Unless someone just goes super ham. Like that's the only out you have. Well, you just, you just need to stack one of the sides. You just got to take a risk because you're. Yeah. You just need someone to at least get. You need someone to get three kills or you're not winning this round the way this is happening. First skill coming in. No second. He's already burning alive. Not much, not much he could have done. Tam like now also gets caught from caught behind the Molotov, so it's gonna take quite a while for him to rotate. Chris to flank. Gets Already taken out. Nullified. And it's a four versus one situation. Doesn't look like Tam Like's interested in saving. It's eleven to three score for the Finns and not a lot of money to work with for the Danes as we enter the final round of the half. So far, just commanding lead for the Finns. They're just outplaying. Yeah. Outplaying Alpha fairly handily. Even with, even with Bana having a bit of a tough game this far. I mean, that doesn't really matter. I mean, this is the scoreline we're looking at, right? No. It's absolutely irrelevant. But it is interesting that even though Bana's been having a hard time in the door, I mean, he's gotten picked apart, picked, I think, I think four times now in the door. Yeah. Even with that, Alf has not been able to work with that or make anything, anything out of it. Look at this. Now they're swarming him. <laughs> in the door, but he's just sitting so far back. It's peak though. But that looks like it might be the end of it. But no, Vazer is just running in, gets taken out. But here's the trade. Not gonna be going, not gonna be going. They for already the, know there's three the there. So now they've already made their decision of pushing into the deep outside, which is a time like here with a deagle. Triple boxes, you have not another eagle with a deagle in CT spawn. So they've already isolated that B bomb site and taken it over in a four and three situation. Looking really, really good for a uh, 12 3 half. It's one kill for, for Christy with a scout from above. 
But the bomb does get planted. Nice shot by Chris Du. Stupid peek from Otto. Yeah, he, he really did not need to go for that peek, especially because he knew there was a scout there. Let's see, Chris Du is going to be peeked by Arvid, but he's not ready for it. The last man standing is Wusung. And he's going to be he's going to be double peeked here. The second that he swings out, Arvid gets a kill. His teammate is not even needed. Arvid with a great half. He's 18 and 5 year tough fragger so far in the game. Ariel second, 16 and 6. Actually, third is Chris Du. He's the one bright spot for the Danes. He's had a had a good tournament overall. A couple of years ago, this was actually the breakthrough tournament for Kirby, who we now yeah. know very well from from Astralis. Yeah. And Asilion, another Danish player, is playing for went to the U.S. for for a little bit, played for Splice, didn't really work out, sort of making a comeback in the European scene. Now those guys broke through just a couple of years ago here. Like no know. one no one had heard about heard of Kirby really before. That was yeah. the first first LAN tournament, I think, big 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 LAN tournament certainly, first international tournament, and he's come he's come pretty far from here. So, I mean, that's, that's definitely something to think about when you watch, say, Chris Du playing well here. Yeah, yeah This sure. is the kind of event where you see who are the next guys who might be coming up in a year's time, maybe two years' time. And from, from this team, even though not another one big is the guy that you, you would know best just because of his time standing in for Astralis last fall for the couple of games before they signed Glaive after benching Carrigan, this could be the next guy who might be coming up in the Danish scene. Yeah, it's very cool. I mean, this is a kind of a, like a... If you want to say from a competitive platform standpoint, is like the, the grassroots in the terms of finding new talent, seeing players that you probably haven't seen before that you might think of, uh, you might see in a couple of years, and playing for one of the better teams. So you definitely do want to keep your eye on these players. You never know what's going to happen because obviously it's very unlikely that that one certain team is going to make it up in the top. But at least you'll get to see individuals within those teams that might be playing for the better teams down, down the stretch. But Still waiting here for the second half to start. Ready. Little issue with uh, being able to write exclamation mark ready. It's I, tough. Can, I can help. You can try, but I don't think it's going to work. No, you don't have the power. <laughs> Just making sure they know. And it looks like we are going live now. So just a 10 second timer and just a mountain for Alpha to climb back from down 3 to 12. I mean, granted, they are on the easier side of the map now, but 3 to 12 is not what they wanted to get out of the first half. They wanted to get in the region of five, six rounds to have something to work with. Now they run the risk of, should they lose the pistol? And by the way, they won the pistol in the first half, and they still only ended up with three rounds, but should they lose the pistol? They're going to be in trouble. But let's see. Vitaly's already threw away a big lead against Havu earlier today, so it wouldn't be, wouldn't be the first time, would it? Definitely would not be the first time. Let's see how it all pans out. The pistol round is live. We have Wusong with a, a Molotov and a smoke. Everyone else with armors. It seems as though they are going to be waiting for a bit first to see if there's any aggression coming from the CTs. It's very common in this map. You'll see CTs pushing B. But instead now, we're just going to see a smoke from here to see the spawn. Well, actually, yeah, it is. And then we're going to see a Molly here coming from behind the box just to try to draw a bit of attention to this bomb site, and then actually nothing happened afterwards. Kind of weird. <laughs> yeah, not really sure what was the... Uh, What's the master plan here? What was the point of that? The Let's see. Alpha's grouping up. They're going to be hitting the B, B site any second now. It looks like they're going to have a clean entry. Bana is playing by CT spawn. Deals some damage, but all the players get in. Arvid gets the opening kill from above, from heaven, just peeking in. He's kind of getting to just peek freely. No one's, no one's covering heaven from, from B lobby. Alpha playing a little passively here. Four on five situation. Not an easy retake for the CTs who have no nades. They're just gonna have to swarm the site and get some headshots. Well, that's a good start. Off to get to one, an aerial, a bona. Everyone's chiming in right now and it's just gonna be a sweep. They're all going down. Sweeperino. Two kills and assists for Arvid. He like he would like to get the defuse. Not giving Dude, the Deuce back teammate, of course. <laughs> Do doesn't let him have it. Just just kidding. Thirteen to three. So I mean, Vitalis lost the pistol round. They still got twelve. Nice. We have a president. Very optimistic, but yes. We have, we have a president. That's true. But they, at the same time, they bought for the second round. They didn't save. 
So that's that's problematic. Sure, but we saw also win a uh, round like this against Super Team. That they are the Super Team after all. So. Yeah, but Super Team was false advertising. Also true. Let's see. It's going to be the push into A through the door. Ariel just... Actually, not the one getting the kills. I mean, the, uh, the UMP not really doing work on A gets three, including two Molotov kills. 14 to three. And this is one of those rounds where, yeah, Alpha has a better chance of winning this round than if they forced about the previous round. But they, they really just need rounds to work with. You can't afford to let Vitalis get to 14. You, you really just want to have at least a couple of rounds to work with, and right now, they just don't. It's a really hard spot for them. They would have to play basically perfect Counter-Strike for 13 straight rounds, or at least 12 out of 13, just to get to overtime. Yeah. Just a, just a tough spot to be in. And from what we've seen so far, it looks like Vitaly should be able to walk away with this game, but let's see. They're boosting up in the A site. Careful not to make noise. Ane going for the uh, for the jump peak in middle. Spots the terrorist walking towards him. Christus very close, and he gets taken out as they peek. There's a player by Vent. Another peeking peeking highway. Vazer gets the kill. The CT low in A, Vazer takes his head off. It's a three-on-three -three situation. Vazer and Arvid are low. They're still autos boosted up in A, and he just blindly continues spraying after the initial kill gets a second. Tamlag now last left alive in a one versus two situation. Misses the misses shot towards car. It's gonna be a tough spot. No, never mind. Arvid rotates all the way to highway. So the bomb is going to be planted, but Bana is the, on the flank. And I'm not sure yeah. if Tam like realizes he doesn't. That's an easy kill for Bana to the side. 15 to 3 and 12 game points now for Vitalis to advance to the grand final. Yeah, it's going to be a tough one for them, isn't it? I would say possible at this point, unless, unless something super weird happens, right? Also, they're not going to be swimming in cash either, so it's going to be a, a bit of a quasi buy for them too. Even a McDaddy in play. No, this is this is not looking good for the Danes at all. The beginning of the end. They have not really gotten anything going for them in this entire game. It's been the problem. Arvid goes down first. That's an aggressive middle take. That's a start. Ariel's playing by fourth lifts, kind of peeking down highway, but he's not spotting anybody. Lafana with three headshots, make four that four. K. Wow. And he's going to be going for the ace here. With a knife Doesn't out. Get of it. course. Of course you go with the knife out. That's you wouldn't. Safe to say he's uh, at least done his job this round. Got the four headshots. Won his team the round. Not a bad showing, 16 to three. And now, just waiting for the grand final where they're gonna get, a, get their chance to get revenge on Habu from the earlier game, which, the, which of course they lost uh, 14 to 16 after destroying a 12 to four lead. I guess if you want to wrap it up for Alpha, I mean, Christo was definitely, I, I suppose, the one player that really, at least struck me, I'm pretty sure did the same for you. Like, he was the one that was making plays, um, hitting crucial shots, the, giving these team opportunities to be able to be competitive in a lot of the rounds. But in the big picture, they obviously still have a lot of things to work on. I, I would fully agree with that assessment. It looks like we are getting ready for, for the post-game interview, I believe, with the winners of... Uh, of Italy, of course. I mean, RV seems to be such a, you know. Thank you. Uh, congratulations, Vitalis and Tony. How did, you, how did that go? Easy. Anything you want to tell us other than easy? Mm, not really. There's nothing to say about the match. You're going to play against Havu on the next game. How's that going to go? Going to be hard. 
All right. Well, thank you for a nice interview. And on that note, it's time to head for a commercial break. But when we get back from that longer break, it is time to find out who wins the Asus ROG Masters. It's going to be bloodbath between two Finnish teams. So when we come back, it's grand finals. <laughs>